In this section, we are going to be learning a very important feature of React Query called the Query Cache. And this is a feature the library provides out of the box. And it's very important to understanding why use Query works the way it does. Let me show you something that you might find interesting. I'm going to empty the cache and hard reload in the browser. Right now, the DevTools does not show any query at the moment. I want you to observe what happens when we navigate to the traditional post screen. We want a slower network speed for this example. So I will throttle it to fast 3G. Make sure the JSON server is still running and navigate to the traditional posts. We see the loading text and the list of posts. Go back home and click on traditional posts again. And again, we see the loading text and the posts. Every time we do this, we always see the loading text, right? Let us now compare this with the RQ post list. If we navigate, we see the loading text and the list of posts. However, if we go back home and then come back, we do not see the loading text. And this is because of the query cache that React Query provides. By default, every query result is cached for five minutes and React Query relies on that cache for subsequent requests. Let me explain in a bit more detail as it is very important to understand how use query works with respect to caching. The first time use query is fired for posts key, its loading is set to true and a network request is sent to fetch the data. As soon as the request is completed, it is cached using the query key and the query function as the unique identifiers. Now, when we navigate to the home page and revisit the RQ posts page, React Query will check if the data for this query already exists in the cache. Since it does, the cached data is immediately returned without its loading set to true. And this is the reason we don't see the loading text for subsequent requests. However, React Query knows that the server data might have updated and the cache might not have the latest data. So a background refetch is triggered for the same query. And if the fetch is successful, the new data is updated in the UI. Since our data is same as the cache data, we don't see any changes in the UI. I hope this part of use query and query cache is clear to you. Now you might be wondering if is loading is not changed, does use query hook provide another Boolean flag to indicate the background refetching of the query? The answer is yes. And the flag is called is fetching. Let's log is loading and is fetching to the console, which will help us better track the network activity. Head on to the browser, empty cache and hard reload, navigate to the RQ posts. And in the console, you can see that initially both is loading as well as is fetching is true. When the data fetching is complete, both are set to false. Let us look at another example where the data does change so that we understand it properly. Let me now navigate to the home page. And now let's come back to the VS code. In the database.json, update the first title name to let's say Sundar Pichai interview one. If we go back to the browser, I want you to first observe the list of posts. We will see the cached list from before for a split second. And then the list will update when the background refetching has completed. So interview and then interview one. You can also see in the console is loading remains false, but is fetching changes from true to false. So in this way, React Query leads to much better user experience as there is a list being displayed already and the list updates in the background as well. So this way, the user does not have to see a loading indicator every single time. I hope you've understood the importance of caching in React Query and how it helps with avoiding unnecessary loading states. So I'll see you in the next section.